President Trump is accusing Google of swinging the 2020 presidential election against him without any evidence. The accusation comes as concerns remain over whether social media platforms will be exploited again like they were during the 2016 election cycle. A new Netflix film called The Great Hack looks at one part of that. It features investigative journalist Carol Cadwallader, who uncovered how Cambridge Analytica used data for political gain. Here's a preview. The Brexit work. I'd started tracking down all these Cambridge Analytica ex-employees. And eventually I got one guy who was prepared to talk to me. Chris Wiley. We had this first telephone call, which was insane. It was about eight hours long and... <sighs> My name is Christopher Wiley. I'm a data scientist, and I help set up Cambridge Analytica. It's incorrect to call Cambridge Analytica a, a purely sort of data science company or an algorithm you know, company. You know, it is a full-service propaganda machine. And Carol Cadwallader joins me now on set. Her reporting on this story earned her a nomination for a Pulitzer. Carol, thank you so much for being with us. Give us a sense, sort of a broad overview, of how exactly the Cambridge Analytica scandal uh, impacted the 2016 election. Well, that's still such an... I mean, it's such an interesting question because there's still so much we don't know. So um, what Cambridge Analytica did for the Trump campaign, what the Trump campaign was doing on Facebook, whether the Trump campaign's... Uh, um, Facebook advertisement, whether there was any overlap with what Russia was doing. That is all still completely up in the air. We're still completely in darkness about that. And um, it's one of the things that were uh, maybe the, the, with this new film, The Great Hack, coming out, is that people will start to get curious again and, and want to find out answers to some of these questions. So in the wake of this scandal, you've had Facebook in statement after statement uh, stating that it is committed to transparency. And I wonder what your assessment of that is. Well, we know that it has brought in new transparency rules around political advertising, around advertising generally. But we also know it just doesn't work. So we now know the names of organisations which are placing advertisements, but we've still got no idea what the organisation behind that is or who's funding it. And, you know, again, going back to it, is that Facebook has been sort of desperate to say, well, going forward, we want to do X and Y. But they've also, that's been very clearly, is that they don't want to address these very, very serious questions which still hang over a set of very problematic elections that took place in many different countries of the world in the last couple of years, of which the US presidential election is one and Brexit in the UK is another. And you believe that Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg has actually misled the US Congress. Why? Well, I think that the Mark Zuckerberg's testimony to Congress last year, that was when he went to answer questions specifically about the Cambridge Analytica scandal. We now know so much more uh, since he gave that evidence. And what we've discovered is that there was data leaking all over the place. We've also discovered that actually there were individuals and employees inside Facebook who were worried and knew about Cambridge Analytica harvesting data in, in different ways well before... Um, even the first reports appeared in The Guardian back in 2015. And I think if you look at Mark Zuckerberg's testimony, there were real questions over whether he was obfuscating some of the very important facts around that. So when Mark Zuckerberg and other tech CEOs testified, lawmakers were criticized for not really completely understanding this technology that they were questioning these CEOs about. Do you think that Congress has an actual grasp uh, on what we're talking about with not just Facebook, but with other social media platforms? I mean, the thing is about it is I think we are all on something of a journey in trying to understand this very, this brave, dark new world. 
And I think that's true of us as citizens and consumers, as it is with members of Congress. But I think we've all come quite a long way, actually, in that time. And, um, and, and I think we're still making steps. I mean, one of the things that I'm finding is that people who've watched the film uh, who knew nothing about this will have been messaging me, kind of going, saying, this is terrifying. Right. And it is, if you take on board what, the, what we now know about the way that we just leak data all over the, every single day, there's mm -hmm. so many pieces of data that we're giving up to companies sure. with no protections. And we know that that is being used and kind of weaponized against us. And, 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 and in Europe, we actually have some rights to know right. about that. And Erica, you have nothing. Yeah. You are completely exposed. It is the big corporates can do what they please. And that is what they have done. Yeah, I mean, privacy concerns are something that we regularly cover here on CBSN. So our audience is, you know, understanding these things. But it, it is, uh, for people who may not be familiar, something that you probably just wouldn't think about as you use Instagram or Facebook yeah, and, or these other I, platforms. And I think one of the really key things about this is, is it, to a certain extent, all of us go, you know, we click that button and say, yes, OK, we accept that cookie. What It's, kind of, it's too much of a hassle and it's so what. But the thing is, is that... It isn't really about privacy. It is about power. Mm -hmm. And it's about the power that we are giving up. Willingly to these, or willingly. unwittingly. Well, kind of unwittingly because we don't really have much choice. But what it means is that these big tech companies have shown that they're actually more, that they're more powerful than nation states. I mean... That is very clearly what Facebook has demonstrated to us in Britain because Mark Zuckerberg has refused to come and answer our Parliament's questions. Um, so I want to end on this. The Vice Review of the Great Hack reads in part, quote, quote, the real great hack isn't Cambridge's ill-gotten data or Facebook's failure to protect it. It's the entire business model of Silicon Valley, which has incentivized the use of personal data to manipulate human behavior on a massive scale. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? That's kind of really well put. And it's just, yeah, it's bigger than one company. And we don't realize it. We, we don't, don't realize it, but it just means our world has really fundamentally changed in the past few years, and that is has extremely serious and grave consequences for essentially for our democracy. And that is why this is a, such a chilling and urgent wake-up call. And so I really hope that people will sort of start paying more attention to this. Yeah, and think about this and, and maybe proceed perhaps asking some of these questions as they turn over that information. All right. Thank you so much, Carol Codwallader, for your time. Really eye-opening and sobering discussion when you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for having me.